we want to animate across these rows, so we're going across all these frames. And up until now, we've set the X coordinate to zero. So this would be the zero X coordinate. And what I'd like to do is to have a clock ticking away in the object. So that let's say every second, we add one frame width to our X coordinate. So we go one second, two second, three seconds, four seconds. And on the fifth second, we want to go back to the beginning and we can use something like the modular function to do that. So we're going to implement that. If you go back into your sprite arrow.java file, and if you go to your source calculations, let's get rid of this uh, X position as zero. And let's replace that with a whole lot of new code. So we've got a local variable called a local clock. Scroll up to the top. We define that in uh, object important variables, local clock. We've also got uh, the sprime, sprite frame count. So we'll be counting one, two, three, four, five, which will be modulated back down to x equals zero. And uh, a sprite frame speed up, which I'll introduce in a moment. Scrolling back down to our source calculations, here's our ticking clock. So we're going to say our local clock, which is set to zero initially. And where is it? Here it is. Local clock is set to zero initially, sprite frame count is set to zero, and our sprite frame speed up comes in as an argument for our sprite object. So we're going to add a delta t slice. Delta t is in seconds, and it's uh, it's fractions of seconds. It increments it by delta t. Now, uh, that's okay if you want it set at one speed, but we've got this sprite uh, frame speed up. So I'm just going to put brackets around our delta t, and we're going to multiply delta t by sprite frame speed up and if the value of sprite frame speed up is equal to one that's just an ordinary addition of delta t but if you wanted your sprite animation to flip through those frames faster you'd increase it and i'll show you that later so if a clock ticks to one that means our local clock has hit a value above one once we've done that we want to increase the sprite frame count then we also want to set the local clock back to zero so you can start uh, counting again so we're using a modulus here Here's our sprite frame count, and that will continue counting. And if it gets uh, above four, we modulus the number of sprite frames in our sprite sheet, which is four, one, two, three, four. And then we multiply that by the source width to get our new X position, which is what I just explained. So I'll go through it again. So it's one, two, three, That's that could be our new X position. And at that point we'd have a blue triangle. So we're flipping through these. Uh, this last bit at the end, I don't like uncontrolled counting, so if we're continually adding to our sprite frame count, uh, that could get quite large. So all I've done here is, uh, if I've detected a modulus that's equal to zero, I set uh, the sprite frame count to zero, which is the equivalent, so it never really counts above four, but I wanted that to be nice and neat. So this is the final part to our sprite tutorials. If you copy across and make sure that your source calculation looks exactly the same as this, you'll have a really nice animation going. So I'm going to hit save and run. And if we click on to our animation activity, you can see that our uh, sprite is animated and it bounces off and it goes to the next row and zooms across. Get back out of that and go back in. And under the current uh, rules that we've made up, this just continues to animate on its own. And if you are making a computer game character, you might only want to animate them when the user's inputting a left and right movement. The choice is yours, but uh, you've got the basics of sprite animation. And because this is an object, uh, we, can, we can create many of them just, just for fun. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. <laughs>